it's it's a fantastic topic. It's it's the coolest topic of the century. Really, and it's just it's just amazing. When I started, I wanted to know. I wanted to really find out what what is what does it do. Uh, I know a little bit about artificial intelligence. I know it is related to computer science topic. Yeah. But I didn't know what are the applications that it has. Yeah. It just it goes. I mean, it's just exponential. The number of applications that I started reading about it. So the simple example is, it's it's an assistant. When you think about uh, customer service yeah. as an example. If you if you go to um, any website, especially a uh, big customer service, whether it is a Home Depot yeah. or a, or a car manufacturing right. uh, uh, auto zone type, right. and manner, yeah. you know if you if you go there and uh, onto their website looking for a part, or if you're already an existing customer, imagine you a chatbot uh, uh, like a, a small uh, virtual assistant will pop up. Hey Tom. <laughs> And you may wonder, how did this guy know about my name? Yeah. So it's kind of spooky and a feeling. The reality is he knows you or she knows you. If it is Jill, she knows you. <laughs> or if it is Joe, he knows you. So it's Jill the bot who has all the data that this entity has collected on me. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And it is truly a fundamental computer science topic. But we, as a customer, we really don't need to worry about that. He knows you or she knows you, whichever the assistant, the name is associated with. And you have a, you are there because you're, there is a reason. You want to know the price of something or you want, you're an existing customer. You want to know, hey, you, you send me a, you send me something right. and I didn't get the bill. Yeah. And so you're asking the assistant, where is, I, I didn't get the pay a bill. Okay. Jill, as, uh, the virtual assistant goes and pull up the bill right in front of you. It's yours right there. Oh, oh okay. I got it. I got it. Now, if you ask the question, instead of where is my bill, and if you ask the question differently, I did not get this month's bill. Right. The, the smart assistant will know you're looking for your bill for some reason. Because there, there's certain algorithms that's picked up certain keywords. Yes, and also they're building data and they're learning themselves how to answer different type of questions. So they can relate their intelligent uh, assistant or bots and they can learn and in, uh, interpret the best, uh, I mean, recognize the best answer for your question. That's, that's unbelievable. I'm talking with Abraham George. I'm Tom Hackett. We're at CMG Studios. It's Talk with Mike and Tom. And I'm joined by my associate, who's also producing and on the cast today, Mike Baltimore. Oh, hey, well, Mike. Tom, it's, uh, it's good to be here. And today, it's a very special day because really we have an IT expert in the studio, and Dr. Abraham George. And so I'm really looking forward to the question about artificial intelligence and uh, this AR. So I want him to talk a little bit more about that. You guys have already started the conversation. So, so what is AR, Mike? That. What is AR? You had mentioned AR. Well, you know, I'm going to refer to the expert, but let's uh, <laughs> let's go and okay. see. Uh, George, can, uh, Abraham, can you help me out here? Tom's asking me a tough question. Uh, AR is AR stands for augmented reality. Uh, it, it simply it simply means adding a uh, digital layer on top of what you do. What you know, it's it's a it's a digital layer. Uh, you you you're all we are all doing our um uh, what you know this is reality you know like we are yeah. seeing face to face and you're doing but uh, in a in a digital world you're adding a layer and it's, that's why it's called augmented reality so um in a, in 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 and in other words you can also call 3d three dimensional yeah uh, it's it's a it's it makes it uh, 
um, it makes it uh, uh, when, when you look through the digital glasses and right. you it comes with a uh, eyewear uh-huh and uh, and that's where you see all these different uh, uh, layers of digital uh, view that you yeah. that you are going to see with the augmented reality I'll give you an example about um, recently that I saw a friend of mine works in um, um, in a manufacturing plant yeah and there what they do uh, he, he's a he's an engineer his job is to fix things in in, a, in in the in the in the manufacturing uh, he, the machine that he is assigned to take care of so as you know it is um, as a maintenance engineer uh, it's such an important part that you have to have everything top notch working but because these uh, dev- uh, these manufacturing item comes through uh, the supply chain and you have to be it, it all needs to work 100% so he he was he had an issue with one of the machines and he wanted to, he was trying to figure out what do I do with this uh, yeah immediately you know he had this glass uh, eye, uh, glass on on his head he put it popped up and uh, he he started talking to um talking to it um this uh, asking the question like a, ask asking a question to his assistant or the trainer yeah hey, how do I get this uh, hooked up to uh, my signal processor? So it starts showing him it, it as starts, he's looking real time at yeah. the actual machine. So the so the glass has the eyewear has a view of the device which he has to work on, and in the, in the, in the glass inside the glass he can see uh, uh, this augmented reality right. uh, where it shows started showing hey. Pointing to this, you know, go there and touch that. I mean, you can really see as like as if, as if Tom is uh, right with me, and Tom is the expert trainer, and he's uh, Abraham. Touch, press that button, and then unplug this wire, and then. All right, let me ask. I mean, so if I'm looking through those glasses, then uh, it'll display on on the glass display. Uh, in proximity to where I'm located to the machine, so it shows you which button to press in that kind of scenario. Yes, yeah, and, and you see, it ha- the, the the glass. Uh, if you do a micro Microsoft Hololens, for example, it's one of the devices in which you can put it, which is very expensive, three thousand, close to three thousand mm-hmm. dollars. But it has a so you're standing in front of the machine that you're maintaining, and it sees that and. Uh, and you have a, a full 3D view inside uh, uh, that uh, this assistant, virtual trainer, is going is showing you this step by step instruction. Press this, press that, press this, plug this. All these steps without any uh, difficulty. Your uh, instead of theoretical knowledge that you used to stay and learn from the class, it's right there in front of you. No mistake is made. Mike, that's exactly what we need to uh, to set the studio up. We need augmented reality because every time you go through the protocol with me, it sounds like it's in another language. I need to put those glasses on and it guide me through how to switch the studio and set up for a podcast. You know, I, I think we're going to put Abraham on retainer and make <laughs> sure that he can help us get that because I need those glasses. I need to show it needs to show me when the audio's too low, maybe when the video is not where it needs to be. I need that uh, augmented reality. How Abraham? How how far out? I mean, it looks like it has some business purposes has been designed for specifics in business but what about the rest of us um should we uh think about buying those glasses or the ready what's the timeline look like for that i wanted to just one step backwards i wanted to tell something i don't know whether you heard what tim cook the ceo of apple no. uh, recently said about the augmented reality yeah uh, someone asked him what does what is it augmented reality is going to do he said, um, we all remember when the smartphone came, you know, right. uh, 10 years ago, where um, the smartphone came in and uh, that disrupted the whole communication for everyone. Right. And now every single human being in the planet has uh, a smartphone. Right. And, and 
everywhere. Was, yeah, everywhere. Yeah. Every, for everything that we rely on smartphone. In fact, if, you, if you're a young person, you have to have it just to function in the world. Yes. yes. And so, you know what uh, um, uh, Tim Cook said? Wait 2025 20, or 2030. Really? Around that that eight, soon? That soon. Every smartphone will be gone. It will be history. And AR will take over the world. Okay, I'm 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 and, sitting here with my mouth open, thinking, <laughs> wait a minute, we are so wedded to our smartphones. I mean, listen, you can't unglue teenagers from their smartphone. You can't unglue adults from their smartphones. And this you sure can't unglue part. Abraham. I mean, Abraham has it on constantly. I, I just I just wonder if you're saying smartphones are going away, you're about to give a lot of people heart attacks out here. So um, I hope you can uh, help me understand that. Better. Mike, uh, Mike uh, when, you know, when I was reading that uh, first uh, few lines about what Tim Cook was saying, I was shocked in the same way that you were. And uh, I started reading, and he said, this, the augmented reality, um, the device and the technology that you have in the smartphone, where hundreds of devices that we used to have 10 years ago, yeah. GPS was an example, uh, you know, <clears throat> and uh, different game console was an example. Everything consolidated into one smartphone device. What Tim Cook is saying is those devices, those smartphone applications yeah. will be going into everything going to be in an eyewear. And eyewear, uh, you may see now well, in a Best Buy or some of these electronics right. store, a uh, little bit bulky and right. little bit yeah. uncomfortable yeah. devices. That just it's just a matter of time. They'll look it, like regular glasses. It will be going to look like regular glass. It can be. Or... It can be a contact lens, and no. it will it'll, it'll go into inside your uh, eye, and you won't even nobody will notice that you're wearing an AR eyewear. You know, all right. So I'm a movie buff, and uh, I know you guys have probably seen Iron Man, but uh, if you see him in his suit. Um, there's that example of AR. He's got uh, multiple uh, inputs on on the, on the screen that he's uh, able to see, and then he is uh, be able to choose from those or make adjustments from that or order commands and those kind of things. I, I, are you saying that's where we're going? Are we all going to be Iron Man? It, it, it is. Uh, uh, in, in first, you picked the right example, and from a kid's perspective, or even from Tom or Mike, or even my perspective, right. if you want to become an Iron Man for some time, this is a perfect technology. Right. You can you can be an Iron Man in the augmented reality, Yeah. high precision, whatever the magic, the Iron Man, the, what we saw in the movie, you could do the same thing, you can experience the same thing. Any characters you've seen, in, in the movie, in the virtual, in the virtual world, you could do the same thing, and you can experience the same thing as anybody. So well, let you're me saying, I'm sorry, Tom. I'm excited yeah, too. Yeah. I didn't mean to jump in on you there, but um, you're saying that's pretty soon. Did you say 2025? Yeah, 2025. It, it's uh, there are there are uh, three, two three big companies uh, that one focus on healthcare, one uh, I mean another multiple focus on uh, um, entertainment. So this is this is right. Up Right, very, very close, very close. Actually, right. I'll send some more uh, e email, I mean, uh, some uh, pointers to read more there. Sure, but the, great. the thing that is, um, um, that uh, uh, really attracted me is Tom uh, and Mike, uh, um, you know, in, in, uh, uh, in India or in uh, South Africa or um, places, there are still places there is no good hospitals. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, right. There is maybe there is maybe for a for a whole district population of 10, 10 million people there may be one hospital and one surgeon uh, or one special yeah. speciality. Yeah. And uh, you know the, if you have a high speed access to internet world and if you have AR augmented reality uh, eyewear, whether it is a uh, the initial Microsoft HoloLens type, or or 
the eye wear, which is much more elegant and modified that yeah. you put on your glasses right. inside your eye. There is two or three surgeons will be with you when you do the surgery in 3D, you, as if they are with you in the room. And so imagine, you won't even, uh, in, I mean, think about <laughs> the first time when a teacher goes to uh, teach in the class, those who teach uh, in a college of oh, education, that's a great you know, example. Uh, I uh, see a where teacher going, goes yeah. to the class for the first time. You know how nervous that teacher uh, uh, in front of the class? It, and think about doctor situation. Doctor is going to do a something unique. I mean, he knows in theory how to get it done. Uh, um, he might have done maybe two times, but this is the third time. But having three more surgeons with that same speciality along with you when you do the surgery in 3D environment and they are with you, they are also seeing the patient. Yeah. Your confidence goes up. You are, right. you, you, your, your surgery will go smooth uh, every, every step of the way. They will, be, they will be telling you, they are, remember, they are, they are virtual doctors who have expertise in this, or they can be a real person somewhere else. Yeah, well, the other thing, it's great for rehearsal for those in high-stress occupations. I'm thinking defense, police yeah. work, yeah. Uh, the, uh, firefighters, anybody who has to do a lot of things that are counterintuitive, yeah. that when you're even in actual training situations, you could make the training very realistic, right? Yes, I'm, yeah. I'm thinking, Tom, yes. that's, a, that's a great example with the, um, the idea of law enforcement because they, they're they wearing cams now. Right. So they've got a camera on it that's recording, Yeah. right? So then it's delayed. You'd have to go back and watch that in, in, uh, at, at another time. But if it was live and it was a VR or, or AR, I mean, then what, what happens is uh, you've got other people monitoring that. You're going to know what happened at the scene. There's a lot of interesting uh, developments here, I think, uh, that's uh, about to come down the pike with this. Yeah. I mean, well, it, it, well, the other thing, too, is, is you, there's a scenario in law enforcement where you go into a range where there are pop-ups. You have the good guys and the bad guy pop-ups, and you practice with your weapon there reacting to stressful situations. But it's really, it, it's obviously a simulation. Now imagine doing the same thing in augmented reality where you actually see the, re, the, the outcomes of your bad decisions. Right. The crowd getting involved or, or people uh, being, reacting to folks being injured seriously, that kind of thing. That's a much more heightened practice, I think, for, so that people can go in and... and uh, learn learn from their mistakes in a low-cost way really well right? I, yeah and the other thing i was just thinking about astronauts and people on the on the international space station that they're already monitoring vital signs right and i guess they do that in military theater as well but they're they're monitoring these vital signs so you know how a person is reacting in their stress level even all of those kinds of things that's I, a good I just, point i just right. got to see yeah. uh, where this is going but uh, all right, Abraham. I'm very excited about this. You got to tell us more. What do you think? I mean, every every. I mean, we we touched uh, space industry. We touched medical industry. We touched uh, education industry. I mean, you can. I mean, there are multitude of uh, uh, industries and businesses that this going to disrupt. In a, disrupt in a in a very good way. In yeah. a very good way. Right. That makes sense. Um, and and the the the. Um, and I mean, everything going to be exponentially changing to a positive growth. Right. And that's what, uh, uh, and so the challenge could be, can human keep up with that exponential change? So good thing is you have the technology to support you to, to improve your uh, hands-on experience and also knowledge base. Because you have all the all the virtual assistants and your databases and the actual uh, uh, experts available, so you are not alone. You remember, in our every other profession that we were all in before, we are alone doing things. So most right. sometimes, right. if you right. are in the office, we can call some assistants. Yeah. But imagine, no matter where you are, you can call anyone or you can use any type of assistance in this 3d world 
This is this is a, a a little off the topic, maybe about what we talked about a moment ago. But I got a friend I uh, go bike riding with, and we go on the bike trail now, and he's diabetic, and so. But now he's just shown me the other day he's got a monitor on him that monitors his glucose level every 15 seconds and, and is out on a monitor that he holds. I think I've seen some of these uh, commercials on TV. But he can check that, and if there's a problem, it lets him know right away. And that's another step toward what we're talking about here where uh, you can monitor yourself. Others can monitor you. People can be there. Then when you need help, you're not alone. Uh, you have all this great information to make a decision about. And, uh, you know, I think your question is a great question. Are we ready? It seems like if it's a disruption, then it's going to take – a while for the general public to sort of come along with this and understand it. There's going to be some early adopters, um, and uh, then we all play catch up after that after we learn how great it is. Another another observation I made, uh, Tom, uh, you you may like it uh, as a as a teacher. I mean, if our um, you know uh, as a teacher or if our children if we, if they if they are in college, imagine the you know the the enterprise of learning yeah. is uh, is exponentially changed and grown. Right, so you, right. I, I mean, if you are a teacher, I mean, if you're a student, for example, and learning physics, and you, you're, uh, you're, um, you're learning uh, d dynamics um, and uh, the motion, uh, you know, the momentum and the velocity and the acceleration. Remember, if that, uh, when, a, when a physics teacher stand in front of it, and you you know on the board or on the whiteboard or you know they uh, write the picture and if a car picture or a, you know traveling at the speed of uh, 32 miles per second or so imagine that class for a second now uh, uh, the the new st the current students or the future students will be able to look at at his or her convenience all these teaching library yeah. Uh, at any time, in three D, in three D, right, and 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 if it is a online a free world of t picking, I want the best teacher. Yes, you know, in the world. Yes, and you have now a data exponential use of data, and you rate, you know, based on the data, you now have the best teachers. You can uh, pick them. Pick you can hand pick them. Yeah, it doesn't have to yeah. limit to an institution. And Scary thing for professors, it, by the way, because uh, it becomes suddenly competitive, right? It is becoming <laughs> <Yeah>. suddenly competitive. <laughs> and also, Tom, uh, it becomes, in every profession, it becomes competitive. Yep. Uh, so the you know, patient and a doctor, uh, same scenario. It doesn't have to be X, you know, particular regional hospital. But you can pick a doctor from anywhere in the world right. that close right. uh, the access to these experts. So, so... Let me ask you about, we talked about two things. We talked about AI and we talked about augmented reality. Is how would it look if the two were interfaced? In other words, these, these contact lenses you're wearing that give you access to the world also gave you access to a digital assistant. Is that something that might be happening? So in, in reality, both are used uh, at the same time. Oh, okay. Both are used at the same time. In these type of examples that we shared, oh, I see. A vast amount of data is built in the cloud. You know, right. so the, these devices, as a smart devices, uh, they, it can access all these data, and uh, and that data makes these devices smarter. Um, I mean, another uh, one example. I was listening to um, uh, Tesla's CEO, Elon Musk. Yes, he's uh, a he's a favorite of ours. Oh, uh, uh, I don't know. Well, yeah, wait, I, wait, let me say I mean, he's a favorite of mine. I'm not sure where Tom stands. We'll have to have a show about that coming up. Uh, yeah, I, I like his podcast. Uh, They're I, really uh, funny. Yeah, I, I like uh, I like him in the sense that he takes things that is right. never imagined. I mean, right. he takes you know, like going to the moon or you know, or, or whatever you know that things that is normally we don't think he imagined. So I like him that way, Im high imagination, creativity. He's, right. really so he was, a, he's really a disruptor, oh, if you talk uh, about uh, that. Yeah, he, he disrupt things. And we, we that is kind of the thing that we, we all like. May not everybody like it. But what he was saying about uh, recently, I was listening. So, you know, we he, he made the electric car and, you know, pretty cool things. So, yes. And he's ventured into so many 
areas. Yes. And uh, so autonomous vehicle, you heard, he's ventured into that. Right. And you know our our um, our own favorite Google also ventured into autonomous vehicle. Right. So, right. So one, uh, I was watching or reading about this um, comment uh, CEO of Tesla, Elon Musk, was making. Tesla's autonomous vehicle yes. is much better than Google's autonomous vehicle. And, and, that, and the reason for that is? The reason for that is, is this is where the data plays a big okay. role. So <clears throat> what, what Elon Musk is saying that you depend on us to develop the autonomous vehicle of the future. Right. Better than, we can do better than Google because we already travel multi-million miles of autonomous yes. uh, 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 vehicle traffic around the world. We have the we have millions of millions of millions of um, data that our autonomous vehicle can make better decisions on. So so that that brings the point about. So it's learning. It's learning. It's and learning. that's the whole AI thing, yeah. right? Yeah, and, and you can imagine, uh, you know, like we we think simple example when we stand, uh, uh, how can I don't want to travel in the autonomous vehicle. <laughs> or send my send my grandma on an autonomous vehicle. Right. You know, right. You know, yeah. Can it make a, de a decision when uh, you know when, when I, just like I drive with my grandma and I can stop there suddenly if someone cross uh, without without following the traffic sign. You know we expect everything to be perfect uh, in 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 order to autonomous vehicle to work. But if comes something like this, if somebody jumps in. And uh, recent, you know, our uh, accident recently happened. A, a truck, you know, didn't right. couldn't see the driver couldn't see because the front because of the reflection of uh, sunlight in the, the morning. Sun. Mm -hmm. So these are things only through data. The more the data you have, the AI uh, and the um, AI build those scenarios, and you it knows how to maneuver that autonomous vehicle. One thing, humans get feedback, but they forget the feedback. AI will never forget the feedback. So Excellent. it's always there. Excellent yeah, observation. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So let me let me go back to the to the idea of uh, disruption because you talk about disruption and since I've known you 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 have predicted some disruptions that in fact have taken place. My question for you is is the the preponderance, the coming preponderance of artificial intelligence and augmented reality, is that going to take away jobs, destroy the economy, people won't have a place to work anymore because technology will take over everything. What are your views on that? I'll, I'll, uh, <clears throat> I'll, um, it's not going to uh, take over um, all the jobs. Um, it's going to create some great jobs. Mm -hmm. that, there are jobs like, um, you know, when you have um, um, a, 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 a friend office assistant or in a, you know, in a place welcome center, you have a, someone sit there, welcome people. Right. Um, you you can, uh, those jobs can easily trans, you know, uh, trans transition to a digital assistant. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're already doing that into through Google Assistant or. Alexa assistant, you know, <clears throat> right. So imagine those type of environment. Uh, anywhere you ask for information, you you can get that information. Yeah, because yeah. that's somewhere, and these digital assistants or AI assistants can bring that to you. Right. And if you want someone in three D for you, now this. AI is going to bring a 3D assistant for you. So, so you can <laughs> see a, a, a live human being that's really not a live human being? Yes. Yeah. But you you may, I mean, I I, I think I, I was thinking about this, uh, Tom, because I, I respect you as a uh, friend and a colleague, but more importantly, I respect you as a professor and a teacher. I sometimes feel uh, if Tom was with me, things would have been easier for me. I, I don't know, sometimes... Uh, good students think about their great teachers. Mm -hmm. So imagine some, uh, I think about that, um, if I can get um, a, 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 a through AR, Tom with me for a conversation. 
That would okay, be my uh, greatest uh, 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 satisfaction. All right. So I appreciate that, Abraham. But I'm I'm going to have to throw in a joke here because if we are starting to do the new show, what would Tom think? Um, I'm going to have to, uh, I got to draw the line somewhere here. All right. But this just need to think about I mean, that. I mean, no, I, I, I didn't. All right. So your point is that you have those people available to you when you need them. Yes. It's pretty and, amazing. And, and imagine, uh, I'm just thinking, uh, uh, I may be, I may be wrong, but I'm just thinking uh, if Tom, uh, Tom, uh, taught many, uh, many students and I'm thinking my father, he's now 83. Taught, uh, he's a zoologist, um, and he taught so many students. So if uh, if those students who taught by Tom or my dad, uh, if they want to talk to them at this time, or really pick up that class on 19, um, uh, I mean 1996 or 2008 in that that classroom environment. And uh, b bring back uh, um, Tom uh, that teaching on uh, neuro neural network or neuroscience or psychology education leadership. Imagine that. I I mean I I just I will be delighted to have that kind of uh, replay in 3D uh, when I am doing my work. Yeah. Now that I I love that uh, scenario. So let's take it a little bit further or. It seems to me that part of the problem here is that our biological brains and the evolution of our brains are not quite ready for some of this information. For example, I, 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 ha I know I've had a lot of great courses, I know I've read a lot of books, and I'd love to have access to that information, but not always am I able to pull that information up at, when I need it. I, 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 so yeah. I, I, I wondered about that because, okay, we've got all the libraries in, our, in the world on our phone, but I'm in the conversation, I need to be able to pull up that information. So what do you think about that? So uh, if I'm understanding you uh, correctly, uh, you're, you're, um, uh, con you know, your concern is all this vast amount of the data that we had that right. was there before. And it, trying to filter that in the moment that we need it. I don't think evolutionary uh, at this point in time that our brain, and maybe it will be at some point, our brains will develop around more information and more access and quicker access like a computer and the, and the faster and faster chip. Um, that's a that's kind of out there, but it, it it does seem to be important to be able to access the information at the right time. And, and the neuro new, neuroscience is part of this um, uh, AI and natural language processing uh, as they as these things as these technology get developed. So uh, they are there. There is neural network neuroscientists, neuroscience engineers. They are all working hand in hand. Um, and you, you know, sky is the limit on uh, these type of futuristic uh, uh, expectations or dreams that some people may have, or uh, problems that we are trying to see. Is it possible? Uh, to 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 me, the biggest thing is um, because I, I'm I'm a I, I'm being a son of son of a teacher uh, parents. I always value uh, a high respect for teachers and professors, uh, naturally, and so I I like. Uh, my math teacher, I like my physics teacher. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I wish I could talk to them for a minute. Right, you know, right. Um, uh, uh, think back. I mean, uh, just just for a casual conversation in a three D right. environment, uh, uh, talking to um, just like this, having this. I mean, ha imagine we do this in a three D environment uh, in the future, and bring back all the previous notes uh, 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 digitally. Rod, I'd have a lot better questions. I'm just saying that. <laughs> so, so the the thing that is. Uh, in, uh, uh, excites me is from an education perspective so much for the future students so much uh, for the faculty or the teachers in the classroom there they can focus more on the one-on-one uh, uh, -on -one engagement of the student uh, with the with, now that we have this technology students can engage uh, in a uh, when they when they need it, when they have a question about a topic they taught last week or the current few minutes ago, they can always uh, rely on this uh, AR uh, technology uh, yeah. and get that yeah. and or AI chatbots mm -hmm. while um, the teacher in the classroom can 
uh, really focus on the students who really need some help in, wow. in the you know in yeah. a real engagement so that to me that is uh, uh, we we love to have that environment so all students will become successful so you'll be leveraging the teacher in the classroom yes that you ultimately the teacher can be can be unleashed to do even more because they'll have these assistants yeah yeah and, and I, I can i can show you i have brought some uh, one one video um you, you know the silicon valley of india is bangalore right and uh, they just launched uh, a, a teacher robot um in in the uh, the international school uh, just recently and i looked you know i looked at the video it's really in the classroom full of students the teacher is not replaced while the robot teacher is teaching the class it's a lady teacher robot teaching uh, the class um, and students are listening to this uh, teacher mm -hmm. uh, uh, robot and uh, while that is going on the real teacher uh, 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 a faculty is going around and uh, paying attention to uh, everyone and, and listening and doing the things that human beings do the best yes. which is analyzing that one-on-one -on -one interaction yes yes yeah. and see is or he can sit and uh, if it is an exam uh, proctor proctor is right there you, you know uh, the uh, ai or um, the uh, you know the robot teacher is taking care of the proctoring and all that but the, this was amazing and um, the robot was teaching uh, the subjects very well and the the powerpoint everything automatically right. driven all that fantastic so i was just looking at what would be the future going to happen so pretty quickly those robots will be the teaching assistants or the teacher and while the faculty is uh, can expand on engagement of the student or increase more spend on research the sky's the limit and the, and the ramp up is exponential in the same way that back in 2006 when you and I were first discussing online instruction, digital instruction, and it was such a big deal and how will you give tests, how will you assess things. And now digital instruction yeah. for some universities is 100% of what they do. Yes. And it's 100% of what many students do now. Right, right. And, and it's been what? 13 years yep. since then. So it's it's incredible to think what will happen. Uh, I, I think Mike used the expression 2025. That's just a few years away. But when you're talking about exponential increase in technology and in the things it generates, who knows what jobs could be generated? Yep. They'll be well, different. Yeah, I was thinking, you, you just mentioned a moment ago the idea of will, your question was about will this replace uh, workers and uh, will be people be put out of work, uh, it seems to me that we have to build a workforce ready for this transition into this uh, further digital age that we're in, and and uh, people have to come up to speed, so we're going to have to be educated. I, I, right. Uh, it sounds like everything has to move along the same way. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Another another observation I uh, when I was reading is, uh, you know, human makes errors, you know, our um, we all make mistakes or errors in our analysis. The, you, you're in this um, AI, AR world, you can guarantee the errors will be minimized. Minimized. Uh, I mean, or zero, probably zero errors. Yeah. And, and when you depend on an AI student to do some uh, mathematics or calculations um, of, or even in healthcare, you know, to diagnosis uh, and uh, uh, for a for a doctor who is really dependent on the nurse to bring the chart or the digital chart, whatever, you know, all that is now in the 3D. You, if you, you know, the 3D AR glass when you're wearing, you have the patient's all history in the digital board right there. And, um, and uh, the, the, even the assistant can speak to you if you want that way, but it's all right in front of you. You won't make a mistake. Data dependent. D data dependent. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. I mean, so so I, th I feel the future is bright. Um, the only uh, thing that I would say, the people uh, who all use this, or people who all make this, the ethics and the integrity is uh, going to be a major, major uh, factor in the in this outcome 
And some of those some of those ethical issues we can't even really foresee at this point because yes. we don't have the data. I mean, exactly. Right. Exactly. We'll have to feel our way as we go, and and maybe the AI will have to feel its way as it goes. Yes. Yeah. You That's know, there, uh, just a, a few days ago we had uh, Dan Rose on for his wonderful podcast, Got Therapy, um, and he was talking about his son, and the reference that he made was how he grew up in a very digital age. And that the new generation coming up are much more prepared for these changes. So maybe we can be hopeful about that in some way. Yes, I mean, if we. I think the current uh, generation. I mean, I would say those who are come, going to come in uh, in five years to the campus or to any institutions, they're going to. They're have coming. Rich, rich experience. Yep. Rich experience. So. I mean, so, so how going forward as as you uh, continue in your career in uh, uh, information technology, computer science, that kind of thing, where do you see yourself going with this? What kinds of things are you interested in in working with as you consult and do various things? Well, one thing that um, uh, that I, I I'm going to do is maintain my consulting, right? Um, because you stay on top of emerging technology. Right. You, 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 that, that's an that's a opportunity. You, can, you know, you, you know uh, things like AR and AI, where it is going, and the human problems, uh, how it disrupts the human. Because mm-hmm. uh, as a consultant, you need to know how these things comes in and how we can help um, and work with the technology to uh, help and smoothen those scenarios. So uh, consulting, is a uh, is going to be my 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 uh, my future uh, at least even if I have a full time job uh, yeah. the consulting job is going to be c- keep me straight and uh, on mo- a new technology yeah it keeps you accountable doesn't yeah it? To, yeah for for riding that wave that's coming yes yeah and, and yeah. then the other area is um, we spoke about all these technology you have uh, data so much data and that's another parallel uh, disruption. Whether a lot of some people may not like the data, but it's so intrusive. Think about someone is uh, knowing me better than me, right? At this point, <laughs> uh, because they have access to my data. Yeah, your history, everything, everything that has a digital footprint in some way, they can gather that and have a complete picture of yeah. you yeah. to a certain extent. Yeah, and, and uh, what we uh, 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 what we all seeing disruption. Uh, uh, I you know when I when I talked about the ethics and integrity, Tom. Right. Uh, we 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 as a team we value so much, and our families value so much about it. And if we if we don't uh, follow, if you don't have that core values, what damage it can happen. You see all the media's right now. So many people does talk shows, mm-hmm. and we. We have a hard time. Who is telling the truth? Right. And so, what is going to happen is AI is now going to analyze uh, these vast, vast uh, big data of uh, so many different information sources, and going to come and analyze and say which one is actually going to be the truth. Okay, let me uh, let me jump in. I was watching a, a soccer game this morning, and uh, um, there was a referee on the field um, that uh, did not see this foul, but the uh, what they call VAR, I think, is the term that they use for it. But it is the uh, uh, replay of a a true foul. It was really a guy had a, another person a, a arm around their neck and they pulled their arm, they pulled them down. The referee did not see it and the play went on. Okay, so I'm thinking um, just the idea of humans catching up with the VR, using the VR in an appropriate way. Um, so they it may override the human's judgment uh, in the long term, however, in this particular case, they didn't go. Even though the people monitoring the video could have called it, they didn't. They let it go with the referee. So, small example, but the idea of the interface between the information and the virtual and um, I would say virtual reality, but augmented reality that they have, um, that's an interplay that has to be worked out in some ways. We're not there yet, I don't think. Uh, Mike, um, um, you know that example is. Access to technology is the key. 
um, um, in instantly, uh, and that we can rely on to make decisions. And um, I think the uh, the uh, athletics team or policymakers or uh, they all have to buy into that. The there there is these type of technology will become decision maker and part of the decision making tools. And I think if we all agree on that, we, and that technology must be available for referees or um, or even teachers in, in uh, pro when you do proctoring uh, by a, a robot teacher. Mm -hmm. So the, these are all uh, f you know gr great possibilities. Yeah, and I think we all have to comply with that. Abraham, what um, uh, what what do you think about personal assistants? Or um, uh, I'm not sure how to formulate this question, but the augmented reality. Can I have an assistant with me or an e butler? As uh, I read in 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 one uh, book uh, not long ago, is it possible for me to have this walking around with me, helping me make decisions, asking it questions, getting feedback? I mean, that sounds a little sci-fi, but what you're talking about is that we're on the path toward that way. Can I have an e-butler, please? <laughs> Mike, uh, Mike, you brought uh, an excellent. Uh, uh, observation, and that's going to help me uh, share this thought, uh, this uh, uh, research I was reading. There are three jobs that will stay w without disruption. Three jobs that will stay without disruption. Uh, no matter how much technology of AR and AI goes into uh, uh, exponentially. Um, plumber, beautician, Cook. Is that it? There's only three. I mean, <laughs> okay, yeah, the, 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 these are three three things uh, straight that I remember reading. Hmm. Their jobs will be safe. So my idea when I uh, graduated from high school to become a plumber that was right on target. <laughs> Maybe I should have done that, right? <laughs> yeah. <No. laughs> uh, when you look back, that was my first Tom choice. The plumber, don't give me that phone. Yeah, at that time, <laughs> that, was a, that was my first choice. <laughs> that, that time, you didn't have an, even internet. <laughs> 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 well, well there, there, there may be a lot of jobs out there that, that are going to be safe, but I, I think we have to embrace this new technology coming up. And I really I, I appreciate everything you've said here today because it's really given me a... Uh, some hope and, and a sort of optimistic view of where this is going and not be afraid of uh, some of this, although there are a lot of people who think the robots are out to get us at some point, and we have to be careful about that and uh, other things. But um, I don't know. This has been a great talk today. Well, th thank you. And I, I really enjoyed uh, uh, the company. You know, both of you are uh, so special to me all the time, you know, for the past 20 years. It's really great to join you, uh, and this is a marvelous place, uh, and uh, I, 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 I can see this, this is going to change and grow. Fantastic place. Big fun. Yeah, thank you, Eddie. Big fun. Fun.